Hi all, I have another very interesting game example to show you today of the Chebinenko Slav. So I hope you've been, been enjoying this mini series of videos about this variation. It seems to be very solid and reliable. Here is a mega clash between Hikaru Nakamura and Magnus Carlsen. And the time limit is an outrageous one. It's bullet chess with one second increments. This is in the Speed Chess Championship at Chesscom in 2017. Round four. Let's have a look. Hikaru Nakamura plays d4. We see d5, knight f3, c6, c4, knight f6, knight c3, and now a6. As though Magnus wants to play a London system <laughs> with bishop f5, but solving in advance the problem with b7. Okay, but white is first with bishop f4 here. This is an interesting move. Magnus actually takes on c4, and we see another feature being revealed here. Does black have the ability to be greedy with b5? Because a6 has already been played. This is an accelerated material grab, isn't it? e3 is played, b5. Bishop e2, and we see bishop b7. And now, Nakamura, I'm not sure if he deliberately gambled here, but b3, I'm wondering if you can spot... An issue with this move b3, if I give you five seconds to pause the video, do you think it should lose for white? <laughs> Basically, if I told you it might be losing for white, how would you do that? The king is still in the center. As they say in the art of war, you should put yourself beyond the feet before going on to the attack. But black's only got two pieces out, right? How, how can this minor kind of move be so fatal to white okay i'm going to reveal to you now magnus didn't actually pounce on the weaknesses of it he played c takes b3 but actually it turns out here queen a5 was possible and you might think this is harmless isn't it well if queen c2 e5 with tempo and opening up the bishop for bishop b4 pin and win yeah it's a pin and win with the king in the center pins are possible and if knight takes e5, bishop b4, and this is end of game after knight d5. Black is winning a piece. So yeah, this I'm not sure though if this was deliberately taken as a risk. Because this move here, if, uh, if it's played later, if white just castled, and it's played a little bit later here after knight b7, it's possible that black could consider b4 because black has got this extra knight bd7 in controlling c5, you see. And so c3 is fine for black, no problem. Um, and if a3, you know, okay, maybe this this is still a small edge for white. It's still, but it's interesting that you know, black is holding on to the material. So it seems maybe, maybe it was a kind of risk taken, b3. So c takes is played... Uh, though by Magnus Queen takes b3 e6 white castles knight bd7 and now knight g5 this seems to be very aggressive against this pawn chain bishop e7 it's largely ignored a4 Magnus castles and bishop f3 this is the point to vacate f3 to put a lot of pressure it seems on this pawn triangle over here this Materialism is it going to be punished? Knight d5 is played. Knight h3, and now knight takes c3, queen takes, and now knight b6. So this is looking at the c4 and a4 squares. We have queen b3, queen d7, knight g5, and in fact this is snapped off. Bishop takes, and now winning another pawn. Knight takes a4. Is Magnus being overly greedy here? And it's interesting now, Hikaru Nakamura plays a kind of positional sacrifice, the exchange sacrifice, rook takes a4, because it looks as though the bishops are really controlling quite a lot between them, and this bishop's hemmed in. And if there's a blockade on c5, it looks as though black might be devoid of counterplay. However, a5 gives the bishop this nice diagonal, rook c1, rook fc8, h4 h6 bishop f4 queen e7 and now we have the move 
h5 being played. I guess this bishop could run into trouble if g3. You could imagine things like g5 and if taking, you know, maybe f6. And where is the bishop going to so the bishop? Uh, might be in a little bit of trouble sometimes, but h5, make sure that that is not an option. But is this pawn going to be a liability in the future? Now, this plays another very interesting move, which might not be optimal here. Uh, there's a spectacular response to it. Uh, Mengs played c5, so he's trying to liberate the position. In fact, there might have been a much more uh, technically correct way to liberate the position with bishop a6 here. The point being, if rook takes c6, bishop b7, and black has that outside pass pawn to play with, so this should be brilliant for black. Uh, if we look at this again with bishop a6, if bishop takes c6, again bishop b7, and there's an Aussie pin there against c1. Uh, if uh, king h1, say, then there's bishop b5, and then a4. So it seems overall uh, this this whole thing is, is good, bishop a6. There wasn't really a bind on this bishop. This is good with the outside pass pawn. Uh, you know, if queen takes, there's other nice possibilities like bishop e2 maybe to fracture over here. So this wasn't played though. We have this move c5 and guess what Nakamura played. Even in this super fast, ridiculously fast time limit, white played a very good move here to try and restore the balance. If I give you five seconds, what do you think Nakamura played? Which shows how ferocious both of these players are, even on these ultra fast time controls. So white to play here, what would you play with white? Okay, bishop d6, yeah, trying to distract the queen away from the bishop and then fork both of the rooks with the bishop. Uh, Magnus really has to oblige here. There's no queen d7 if queen e8 just taking and taking. So he has to oblige with this, bishop takes b7. And tries to salvage something with c4 to at least try and keep maybe the outside pass pawn. We have bishop takes, rook takes, rook takes c4. So the game's been reset in a way. 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Is this pawn potentially vulnerable? Is that pawn potentially an asset? Uh, let's see what happened here. Queen d5, rook c5, queen d8. And now uh, there is a slight mistake which encourages another kind of pin and win type move. Nakamura played rook b5. In this position, instead of rook b5, g3, it would seem, and white's pretty stable. The h pawn is controlled, is protected rather, by the rook. And if, for example, queen b6, this looks like a stable position with equality. But rook b5 was played, and now, in fact, Magnus is again trying to win the game, and maybe has an excuse for that, with this next move, guess what Magnus plays here? If I told you pen and win is a clue and five seconds, can you see what black plays in this position? Okay, queen e8. It's rather powerful, in fact, even in this simplified position. Pinning that rook, so if takes, just taking the queen, uh, that, just to put that on the board, if takes, we don't take the, <laughs> that loses the queen anyway, just take the queen winning a rook basically so that is pinned and also the virtue of this it's looking at both sides of the board if f5 is played this pawn is disconnected and in hit and we see this here g3 is played and now f5 okay so queen c4 and now a4 rook b6 a3 rook a6 king h7 but now with slight you know, concerns, mold concerns, mold issues about this pawn. Why it makes this slightly worse, they uh, could have just played here, it seems, the move king g2 to maintain equality. This move just maintains equality. Black's not really in a position to win this h5 pawn. However, uh, a slight mistake now, g4 is played. A bit over ambitious, maybe g4. Uh, Magnus takes on a6. Queen takes and now takes on g4. And this pawn is worth taking. Yeah, it undermines this. Okay, we have check and then taking the a3 pawn. But in fact, black is doing well here after queen takes h5. 
we have queen d6 and now queen d5 this offer for the exchange of queens would be winning for black white avoids that with queen e7 if queen takes d5 this is just a winning endgame of the g5 for example it's uh, absolutely winning this endgame for black so we have queen e7 and now queen f5 queen c7 uh, sorry queen f queen e8 pardon me and then king h7 queen d7 and now queen e4 queen f7 and here an undermining move is played guess what magnus plays here really powerful stuff if i give you five seconds here what would you play in this position for 100 points okay you want to undermine pawn chains in general g3 trying to break this pawn chain down we have queen c7 g takes f2 check and this also gives the idea that these pawns are more dangerous now we have check and now h5 the writing's on the wall here e4 this is rather desperate yes but the writing is on the wall with these these pawns uh, so this is just um, accelerating to the end now and here uh, either black just won on time or, or white resigned so anyway i thought it was an interesting game at a super fast time limit but shows that this opening is solid at all time controls and it is played by magnus it seems uh, quite a bit in speed chess and other uh, and faster contacts so it is kind of a reliable weapon of choice this a6 so i wonder if how many of you have actually tried this a6 there's three main choices here really d takes bishop f5 or a6 magnus has played all three so is shirov it seems that slav players have tried all three from this position but a6 yeah is one of them to be uh, very interestingly um uh, considers and you know the materialistic idea of the bishop f4 of just snapping off of b5 is another feature i would say well, that's why i thought this was worth mentioning this game example just to sort of get an idea of the kind of the range of features available and ideas with this opening so against the bishop f4 yes it seems that the cheeky d, d takes c4 might actually be justified sometimes of course it's better to have game examples on along the time limits though so maybe we shouldn't take too much from this game but uh, i thought it was interesting nonetheless if you want to research more about this um, chebinenko slav and chebinenko was a player by the way in his own right he he should have more games at chessgames.com than he does but he was a, a player uh, who that's what it's named after uh, but if you want to find out more there's a free short and sweet course at kings russia tv slash Cheb Slav, if you want to check that out, uh, Grandmaster Alex Kolovich to check out there some call cool lines. Okay, I hope you got something from this. Comments, questions, like, share, subscribe with the notification bell, always appreciated. Thanks very much. Chess is an exercise in awareness. It is evolution in motion. I evolved. This is where I am today. I like the feeling of strength that the pawn on d5 gives me. It feels like building a castle, a fortress. The pawn goes to d5. It is supported by his brother on c6. The knight comes to f6 for more stability. Bishop goes out to f5 as a guard outside the gates. Eventually, the pawn on e6 forms a triangle for the safest pawn structure in the center. It gives me confidence for the upcoming battle. This is the Chebanenko Slav.